You are listening to the Life Coach School podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 57. Welcome to the Life Coach School podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. Hey, (laughs) y'all. Check it out. This is my first podcast that's an interview where I have someone else on with me. So let's like a round of fun applause there. So here's who I have on today. And I am so excited because one of the most popular episodes we have is the one we did on anxiety. And one of the reasons why I did that episode was because I had been working very closely with Kelly, who is an expert when it comes to anxiety. That is the focus of her practice. And that's basically who she works with is people suffering from anxiety. She's also an amazing yoga teacher, which of course correlates beautifully with that. She is an instructor and believes in all things yoga, which you guys know I do too. And so Kelly Hanlon McCormick is my guest today. I can't wait. We don't spend a lot of time talking about her history and we just basically talk about anxiety and how it applies to you and how she does her work. So if you want to learn more about her, Make sure that you go check out her website. I'll put it in the show notes. It is kellyhanlonmccormick.com and you can go there. She has a great blog with lots of beautiful pins (laughs) that I love to look at, but go check her out and reach out to her. She does consult calls, free calls. You can see if you'd be a good fit. And for those of you who are thinking about getting coached, I highly recommend Kelly. She's fan fantastic. She's one of my students from Client Concierge, and I've spent a lot of time working with her very closely. And so I'm excited to offer this wonderful first interview up with Kelly. So please enjoy. Kelly? Yes? Hello there. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Okay. So you are my very first guest on my podcast. I and know. I so thought excited. what would be the most fantastic, we're going to go for about a half hour. And whenever I listen okay. to podcasts, they spend so much time like introducing the person and, you know, yeah. kind of messing around. I just don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I yeah, want you no, to spend like two minutes just telling people who you are, and then we're going to jump right into the content. Perfect. So who the Perfect. heck are you? So... I am a life coach and yoga teacher in Kansas City, and I work with people who are experiencing all levels of anxiety, from like that low-level hum of anxiety in their life to full-blown panic attacks. I teach yoga, and I incorporate all of this into my yoga practice as well. I think yoga is one of the best ways to get into our body and understand how our minds and our bodies connect. Trained with Brooke at the Life Coach School a few years back and have been practicing as a life coach ever since. Love that. And I'm excited to have you on the show because I feel like so much of the coaching that I do and so many of the questions that I get are around anxiety and people not knowing how to manage it and people kind of indulging in it. One of the topics that I've been talking about a lot on the podcast and in my trainings is this idea that we kind of indulge in these emotions And anxiety doesn't seem like one that we would indulge in. It seems like one that happens to us, right? Mm -hmm. It's like all of a sudden we wake up and notice that we're in anxiety. But what I've noticed personally, especially after really learning about your work and what you're doing and thinking about this for myself, is I notice that sometimes I wake up with anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. So I wake up and I feel anxious, and that doesn't make sense because all of our feelings are coming from our mind. And so as soon as I feel the anxiety, I'm like, wow, what is my mind already up to this morning? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just woke up. What's already going on in there? And so my practice has been to kind of wake up and just kind of watch my mind rattle off these thoughts that create this anxiety. And what it's done for me is it's taken me out of this indulgence in it, in, in just saying, well, today I'm going to feel anxious. 
well, today I guess I have anxiety because as soon as I separate my mind and I see, you know, my mind is creating these thoughts that are creating the anxiety, immediately I go to that watcher space and I no longer feel it. So I know that you're working with a lot of clients that have it, and I just, I kind of want to get your take on what you think about my morning practice. Yeah, I think just like what you're talking about with the morning practice, I think anxiety is something else that we practice when we get really good at disconnecting from what we're feeling, disconnecting from what's really going on in our mind. So mm-hmm. kind of wake up with this, with this oh, anxiety is already showing up. Like I just woke up five minutes ago. I haven't even gotten started yet. Why is it already showing up? Because you're mm-hmm. practicing, because you're good at it. So mm-hmm. if it's a habit, like... Okay, so think of the habit like you wake up and you brush your teeth, right? You don't even Mm -hmm. really think about that. It's just the same way with anxiety. We are that good at anxiety and stress and worry are kind of the same thing, that it's like you Mm -hmm. wake up, you brush your teeth, and you're anxious because you've gotten really good at it. So it's not even something that you consciously have to think of when you wake up. You don't even have to notice what's going on with yourself because it's like, boom, there it is, right? Right, yep. And I think that the thoughts are always the same thoughts, just another another flavor of them, right? So it's like, oh, you know, it used to be many years ago, it used to be I'd wake up in the morning and think about how much I weighed. I thought about Mm -hmm. how much I weighed, how much I ate the day before, and what I was going to eat the day coming up. And I was already, Mm -hmm. immediately my brain would go to that. It was programmed to think that, and immediately I would be on the defensive in terms of feeling anxious. And now yeah. what I notice is I wake up and there are thoughts about like the evening before, like if I went out with some friends or if I talked to someone at soccer practice or something that I had said to the kids. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Immediately, my brain is like seeking those thoughts. It's crazy. Like you said, it's like even unconscious. Yeah. But you know, what it is for me now is that anxiety is now a cue to look into my brain. Oh, And that's what I talk about with so many of my clients, like treat anxiety as your superpower, right? This is the Mm. red flag that's showing you up to say, hey, look, something else is going on. So I'm feeling anxious, like for you, do I need to check back into something that I did last night? Did I, did I say Mm -hmm. something? Did I act in a way that isn't quite aligned with who I am? Or, or is this something that I'm just practicing? And so guess what? You woke up and now you're anxious because you've practiced waking up and being anxious. Right. And I think no, I, th- I think that's so interesting. So it's things. almost like we've practiced anxiety, and so we've gotten good at it. I know totally. it sounds crazy, but I think that's what you're saying, right? It's like, yeah. it's like the default to go there. Well, and the thing is, it's familiar. It's not, it's mm-hmm. not comfortable. It doesn't feel right. good. But at least you know how that's going to go down, right? Yes. And so, it's, yeah. so the, the alternative is something that even if, like, logically you and I talk about it, you know that maybe it would feel better if you didn't wake up and feel anxiety. The thing is you don't know what that looks like because it's something you haven't experienced before. It's something new that you have to practice. Mm-hmm. You have to right. practice waking up and feeling something other than anxiety. That's a new practice. Well, and what's interesting about it is I think that, I've gotten really good now at because I'm able to like catch it soon enough. Yeah. Then I don't experience much of it for the rest of the day. Right? So right. I notice sometimes it's so interesting. I was just someone was just telling me the story about how they got a phone call from someone that they had pitched a contract to for a large sum of money for a contract for coaching. And the person had come back to them and said, hey, I have some feedback for you on your contract. Now, this wasn't even my contract. This wasn't even my issue. But the minute she said that, like, I felt like that twinge of anxiety in my stomach. And it was like almost like the thought happened so fast in my own head that I couldn't acknowledge it before I felt the feeling of anxiety. But as soon as I felt it, I went, oh, I must be thinking something. It's gone terribly wrong here or that the feedback is going to be negative or something. And immediately, that's what my brain did. Oh, my gosh, she got negative feedback on her contract. When the truth was, she got really positive feedback on it. So, I mean, I, I think that's an interesting thing, too, is using it as kind of that signal 
when you can't be aware yeah. of it. Yeah, and I've, I mean, there's a lot of clients that I talk to. It's always kind of this mind-bendy thing to think, can you think of that feeling? Because it does, it leapfrogs way over that, the thought that you're having. It happens so quickly that pretty soon you're feeling anxiety before you notice even what's going on in your mind. But mm-hmm. if you can treat the feeling of anxiety as that superpower, here's what's coming mm-hmm. up for me. Am I, is it because I've, I've started practicing something and I've gotten really good at it? Is it because there's something real that's showing up here? Like for you, when you hear about this contract, is it, mm-hmm. do you have a contract in the works? Is it something that relates to you? Are you, do you really love her? Do you really care for her? Is it something that you're nervous on her behalf? Like what's going on there? Anxiety right. can show up and remind you like, hey, your body is physically, like there's a vibration going through your body to show you something, to tell you something. Can you pay attention to it? Or are you going to run away with anxiety and let this turn into a panic attack? And like you said, kind of control the rest of your day. Are you going to have an anxious day with this? Right. So what would you say to clients who say, well, how can you say that anxiety is something that I'm creating? Like that doesn't make any yeah. sense. Like, what about anxiety disorders? What about people that are just normally anxious people? Are you really going to try and blame that on them? How would you answer that? Sure. And I try to remind them it's not a blame thing. Let's just try to figure out where the responsibility lies. Take power back where you can. So I'm not interested mm-hmm. in blaming you. I don't want you to blame you because as soon as we head down the route of you blaming yourself, now we're adding pain on top of pain. So let's not do that. Mm-hmm. But If you can think of anxiety as a way that you have probably tried to protect yourself, you're probably trying to route around something else. For instance, if you're really scared about something, if you're nervous about something, if you're worried about something, then sometimes it's easier, especially if you've gotten good at it, especially if you started practicing anxiety and it's something that shows up for you and you're familiar with it, it's easier for you to be anxious and just be like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just anxious and just in my head. And, and then pretty soon you start teaching your family and your friends that you're just an anxious person. It's easier to do that than it is to look at what you're scared of or to look mm. at what you're nervous about and say, oh, I'm really scared about this thing that's coming up. Whether it's a real fear or whether it's, it's a presentation you have at work, you know, something that you're, you're kind of nervous and terrified. I don't want to stand up in front of a group of people and talk. But Mm -hmm. then you can start looking at, okay, I'm just scared. I'm not actually anxious. I'm distracting myself from feeling fear by choosing anxiety instead because I'm familiar with it. Plus, it Hmm. allows me to disconnect a little bit from the fear and kind of numb myself here. I don't even have to pay attention to the fact that I'm scared. I can just go blame it on, oh, I'm just an anxious person. I just worry. Like, that's just in my DNA. I can't Mm -hmm. help it. And it's so much easier to write it off as like, oh, that's just the way I am, then it would be to say, you know what? I've got this big thing ahead of me and I'm scared and I'm going to feel fear in my body. I'm going to acknowledge what's coming up in front of me and I'm going to go do it anyway. Yeah. You know? So what, what do you think is the main problem with anxiety? When people kind of, you know, like I've used the word indulge in it and you've used, you Mm -hmm. know, the word practice it and having it be kind of convenient, which I think we'll probably get a lot of people listening that would say, well, how can you possibly say that? Like people have anxiety disorders, people take medication for it. And I want to say that we're not talking about that level of anxiety and we're not even going to address that here. But what we are going to address is you know, even just someone like me experiencing that tight anxiety feeling in my stomach, I used to feel it all day. And Mm -hmm. even though for me, it wasn't pleasant, it was something I really just got used to feeling all the time. So what would you say is the main problem with it, with, with allowing that to just be there? I think there's two main problems with anxiety. The one problem is when we believe that when we start identifying with anxiety, so kind of like what I said, well, if I just believe that I'm an anxious person, like this is just Mm -hmm. the lot I've been dealt, you know, this is just how it is, then I don't see that there's any other option for me. I think that this is how I have to live my life with that feeling in the pit of my stomach, that shallow breathing, the, the way that I sometimes am just sort of distracted and numb to things. I can't be really present. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's just how it is. I think another problem with anxiety is when we think anxiety is a problem. 
let's think of this historically and biologically. We've evolved into this fight-or-flight response. It's a survival mechanism. It keeps mm-hmm. us safe. It keeps us out of harm's way. So if something's dangerous, so think you're, in, you're in, on the highway, right, and the person in front of you slams on their brakes. You feel this is like the free-flowing fear. This is when you really allow fear into your body. You feel that mm-hmm. like, and you slam on your brakes, but you're able to handle it. You're able to like save yourself and your car and the people who are in you in the car with you, right? And you do it. When we start believing that anxiety is the problem, if we go down that path and then it's just like, well, this is how it's going to be. This is, you know, I can't protect myself. It's not any good for me. And we forget that there's these situations where when anxiety shows up, you do need to do something. Mm -hmm. It's telling you something, right? It's not always a problem. It's an emotion that we all experience that we should expect to experience. You're going to be sad. You're going to be happy. You're going to get angry. Sometimes you're going to get anxious and it's okay. Yeah. If you think that it's a really big, bad problem, because think, I mean, I guess we could argue that people with like, who think that sadness is a really big deal, maybe they get depressed. But if we start identifying with anxiety as this really big problem, then that, that runs away and, and turns into something. It's just something you can expect to feel. It's on the emotional spectrum. Like, no biggie mm-hmm. if you're ready to handle it, if you can expect it. Don't be surprised by it. Just know it, it's going to come up sometimes. But yeah. so, is, so is yeah. happiness, so is contentment, so is joy. Yeah, and I do think anxiety can be kind of one of those cover emotions like you talked about. I think it can be one of those things that we use in order not to feel. And so I think you're right. If you look at anxiety as something that's an indicator and not a huge problem to be dealt with, because I think a lot of times, you know, if I wake up feeling anxious, I could make that mean that something's wrong with me. Right. right, and right. and then then that's going to make me even more anxious, and then we compound our anxiety unnecessarily. Yeah. Whereas if we wake up, we're like, oh, anxiety just means that I'm having some generalized thoughts that aren't serving me that I'm probably not aware of. That's been my personal experience that it's been it's been really helpful to think about it that way. Okay, so you also talk about anxiety as you say, treat it like an ugly suitcase. What do you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> Treat anxiety like something that sometimes, like we just talked about, sometimes anxiety is going to show up for you. And if you're a person Mm -hmm. who's been practicing anxiety, who's gotten good at it, who's gotten familiar with it, anxiety is almost definitely going to show up for you. So just schlep it along for the ride. It's okay. You can still breathe. You can still function. You can still keep watching your thoughts, you know, treat your thoughts as you're not identifying with all of these anxious thoughts. You can just notice, oh, there's another anxious thought. There's another anxious thought. Anybody mm-hmm. who was thinking this way would be feeling anxiety. You can keep doing that and just treat it like an ugly suitcase that sometimes you have to carry with you. But you still mm-hmm. get to function. You still get to be who you are in life. You don't always have to be anxious. And then I think when you can start like carrying the suitcase, you start owning it. And when you can start mm-hmm. owning it, Anxiety doesn't have any power over you. You're like, no, this is just a suitcase I brought with me today. <laughs> right. It's sort of right. ugly. Right. It's sort of cumbersome. But I chose to put my stuff in this today, and we're going to take it with us. But you don't have to think of it as something that got thrown on you, or it's not a part of being of who you are as a person. It's just something that yeah. you're carrying. You're choosing it. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. We all have a like from time to time, you know, but if you can own it, if you can take responsibility for it, then you can start reminding yourself, this is something you're creating for yourself. You're probably protecting yourself somehow, some way, and it's just a little messy right now. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I like that because I like the idea, you know, sometimes when we're anxious, it's like we start pushing against it and we start not wanting mm. it. And then that, of course is the opposite of owning the fact that we're carrying it, right? And I have found like, oh, I'm anxious and acknowledging it and, you know, not saying, oh, it's fantastic, but just acknowledging it is really that first step for me. It's like, okay, then it doesn't make it any worse. But when I'm like, oh, I don't want to be anxious. I'm going to pretend like I'm not anxious. I'm going to push that away. Yeah, I've, I've found that. It really, for me, just makes it work. And you kind of, you refer to that also as you say, give anxiety a welcome mat. It's kind of the same idea. You want to talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, it's that that kind of idea of acceptance that, you know, instead mm-hmm. of pushing against it, once we accept the idea that there's this whole range of emotions that as human beings we're going to experience, and mm-hmm. that, you know, sometimes our thinking runs a little wild, and sometimes <laughs> we're not paying as close of attention to our little minds as we should be, and so then these emotions come up for us. As soon as we can start expecting that, we stop being surprised by it. When mm-hmm. you can stop being surprised by it, you can kind of set out this welcome mat for any emotion, including anxiety, and just say, I know you're going to show up sometimes, and it's okay. And some mm-hmm. amount of anxiety in my life is healthy. Some amount of anxiety in my life is alerting me to something I need to pay attention to or to something yeah. that, I mean, it, it could be little things that, like, this isn't quite aligned with who I am or who I want to be or what I want to be doing or, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, any amount of discomfort where you're just maybe not quite conscious or alert or aware enough in your life yet. You know, if you can lay out that welcome mat and let anxiety be the red flag for you instead of, like, what you're saying, like, oh, I don't want to feel this. I'm going to push this away. I'm not going to pay any attention to what this might be telling me about myself. Yeah, love it. If you can lay out the wealth on that, pay attention. You're going to find out so much more about yourself and who you are and how to deal with anxiety. And in the the process of all of this, of course, you stop practicing anxiety. You're practicing something new, which is called awareness. Love it. So, so tell me, yeah. when, you, when you work with a client who comes to you because they're feeling either a little bit of anxiety or a lot, you take them through a process. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works if someone was going to work with you? Because I think it's cool to share, like, a lot of people have been listening to the podcast, but they don't really understand what it would be like to work with a coach. So can you talk a little bit about your program and your process and how you work with people? Sure. What I typically do with people who contact me who are experiencing anxiety is I offer them my six-week program, which walks them through. Like week one, we do, it's called Clarity. They submit pre-work to me. We walk through all of this so that we have a good foundation laid for what they expect to get out of this program, where they are, you know, what the story is. And we talk a lot about in coaching, one of the differences between therapy and coaching is that we're not going to tell the sad story over and over again. I want to get it out so that I know where you are. Like, we're drawing this line in the sand. But now we're going to move forward. So that's kind of what week one is about, is here's the line. And from here on, we're totally future-focused, and we are taking responsibility and moving forward. So that's week one. Mm -hmm. Week two, we start talking about thought work, where we really understand the model, how your thoughts Mm -hmm. create all of your feelings, how your feelings create your actions, how that creates your results, and then how all of your results in your life, of course, are proving you right about what you're thinking. And this is, of course, true with anxiety as well, that anything that's creating anxiety for you proves the thought that you're an anxious person, right? So we kind Mm -hmm. of start unwrapping the idea of how powerful our thinking is, stepping out of identifying with our thoughts and being our thoughts, but just acknowledging that our minds are thinking machines and, and noticing the common thoughts. Like we said, we practice anxiety. We have what, 60 or 70,000 thoughts a day, and however many thousands of those are the same thoughts that we had yesterday and the day before and the day before that. And so noticing, do you see how you're practicing anxiety? Do you see why you would wake up every day and feel anxious, you know, and start noticing Mm -hmm. those habits and patterns? So that's what we do when we talk about thought work. And all of these weeks kind of intermingle together, of course. Mm -hmm. So the next week we start talking about control understanding where you do have control in your life, which I think is a lot more than people think or assume or just unconsciously take responsibility for. And, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously the places where you don't have control in your life, you can't control what anybody else says to you. You can't control politics or the weather. You can control how you're thinking about it. And if you can control how you're thinking about it, of course you can control how you're feeling about it. So we start talking right. about really drawing this, this line between, and this happens in relationships and jobs and, I mean, everything, where can you see how, you know, nobody else can hurt your feelings. You hurt your feelings. They're mm-hmm. responsible for their feelings. And we, so we really start understanding where you've got control, where you don't have control, accepting that, taking responsibility. So that's the third week. Week four, we start talking about energy. And this is both kind of an inner energy. What sort of energy are you bringing to your life? What sort of energy do you have around different thoughts or different actions or different people or different circumstances? 
And it's also about moving your body. I think there's this huge, enormous element to all of this that exercise and moving your physical body helps with the thought work. If you can get out in nature Mm -hmm. and take a walk, if you can get on your mat and do a yoga practice, and then notice what's coming up for you in your physical body and in your inner body after in your emotional body as a result of doing this sort of work, then that's a whole bringing the inner and the outer together, understanding that outer energy and the inner energy and taking, taking control of both of those. So that's week four. Week five, we start talking about presence. And again, this has an inner and outer component. This idea of being present and showing up not allowing that disconnection or that numbness that anxiety gives us, really, but mm-hmm. figuring out, okay, if you were going to feel the fear instead of feeling anxiety, instead of excusing yourself to f- have a panic attack, what would that be like? And feeling mm-hmm. that. So being present in that way, but also the presence that you have in your life, which, again, kind of overlaps with the energy, the presence that you have when you walk in a room, the presence that you have with your family, the presence that you have in your job. What sort of presence are you bringing to all of these things, which, of course, is directly related to how present you are when you show up with your family or in your job, right? And then in the last week, we talk about intention, which is where we take all of the work that we've done and we set goals for moving forward. How are you going to take all of the work that we've done, everything that we've talked about, all of these tools and exercises and different ideas, and put them into your life so that it's not a six-week program that never goes anywhere for you, but it's a Mm six-week program that starts becoming a daily practice for you. What sort of intentions and goals do you have for yourself where anxiety is concerned, where any other emotions are concerned, where any of your actions are concerned, or when you start really looking at the results in your life and you start realizing like these results are directly related to how you're thinking. So what sort of intention do you want to have around your thoughts and your results and figuring out what would that have to look like for you moving forward? What do you want it to be like? How do you want to feel? So setting goals around all of that is what we do in our final week. So, Love it. Yeah, that's so kind of an overview. Your clients that have gone through this program, what do they notice? Like what, what are the benefits of doing it? What do they walk away with? Yeah, I think truly, and I know you won't be surprised to hear this at all, <laughs> I think far and away the thing most people walk away with is awareness. They have Mm -hmm. so much more awareness around what they're thinking, around what they're feeling, around when anxiety shows up, when fear shows up, when sadness shows up, when anything, even if it's happiness or contentment. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can do it whether it's negative or positive, right? What's it showing you? What's it telling you? What are you thinking? What's this creating? How is your physical body responding to these emotions? When you take that week of energy and, and you notice things in your physical body, how is that responding to what you're feeling in your mind and your emotional well-being? What does your emotional landscape look like? So I think far and away, people walk away with more awareness, more consciousness about their thoughts, the fact that they are not their thoughts, that they are outside of their thoughts. They don't have to become that. And mm-hmm. that, you know, the realization too, I think the other thing that people walk away with is how much control they have that they have not been paying attention to. They just have no mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so interesting because I talk about awareness all the time. And I know we talk about you, of course, talk about it in yoga. And I take a lot of yoga, too. And it's all about awareness. And it sounds like this kind of existential thing that's like out there that people do that's not necessarily the most powerful thing that you can do in your life. Like awareness for some people doesn't seem to equal strength. It doesn't seem to equal success, but it does because awareness is everything. When you, because what, what it requires of you to be aware of yourself is to be present. That yes. is your most powerful place. And I think that's the hardest thing to explain to people is that awareness yes. isn't something you just do on your mat when you're in a Zen mode. Awareness is what helps you make a million dollars, is what helps you lose all that weight, which is what helps you stop feeling anxious all the time. Because a lot of people that feel anxious all the time. And I know you went through your own bout of anxiety and panic attacks and all of that yourself. So I know that you know of what you speak. And so 
how debilitating that can be from becoming the person I think you're truly meant to evolve into. So that's why I love your work. And that's why I wanted to share it with everyone that listens to the podcast and also give them the opportunity if they want to. I know there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that want to go in deeper and get some one-on-one coaching that I could kind of offer you up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, offer great. you up for because you know I don't do the one on one coaching anymore, but I know that you great. do. And if people really want to dive in, so how can they get a hold of you if they're interested in signing up and and going through the process and learning what it's like to be coached for six weeks? Yeah, so if they would like to email me directly, which would be great. Um, they can get me mm-hmm. at Kelly K E L L Y at kellyhanlonmccormick.com, dot com and I know you'll probably put links in all the show notes and everything. Yep. On my website, if they are interested in listening to I've done a, an anxiety webinar, it's about twenty, twenty five minutes long or so. If they mm-hmm. sign up for my email list, they will get that access to my reducing anxiety webinar immediately and they can listen to that. They can hear I go even more in depth into what causes anxiety, what the problem is, how to fix it, you know, what, how we try to deal with anxiety so they can get that, you know, free access right away. And all of my info, of course, is on my website at kellyhanlonmccormick.com and they Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. But email me. I would love to hear from people directly. I love talking to people one-on-one and I know, like you said, you don't coach people one-on-one anymore, but I really love talking with people and hearing their stories and understanding You know, it's interesting. I think that maybe it was Elizabeth Gilbert, somebody totally profound and evolved like that, said maybe it was Glennon Doyle. Anyway, we all have these very different lives on the surface. Like my family looks different than your family and my house looks different from their house and all of that good stuff. But when you really start digging down into what's going on, it's all very similar. And anxiety is Mm -hmm. definitely that way. That yep. the further you can get into somebody's story, the more open people can be, the more honest they can be about what they're experiencing, the more it's like, yeah, we've all been there with anxiety. I totally get yep. that. There are only so many experiences to have with it. And the surface may not look the same. We all have different stories on the surface. But the deep down, the good stuff, that's it's all very same. We're all connected that way. So, yeah, I love hearing people's stories and understanding how everybody works that way. Right. And I just want to say, too, I think it's one thing to listen to a podcast and read a self-help book and to watch a webinar and get the information. It's a whole nother thing to have a whole hour once a week devoted to your brain and looking at your brain with someone next to you that has that perspective. That's why I'm in love with life coaching, because... There's nothing better than having that space. It's such a luxury, I think, to have that space to look at your life with a compassionate witness. So if if you've ever thought, well, maybe I could dive into this coaching thing and maybe I I, want to see what it's like to have a coach, I highly highly recommend everybody has a coach. But if you specifically have any problems with anxiety, I absolutely think you should test it out with Kelly and go find out more information on our website. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me as my first guest on the Life Coach School podcast. Very exciting. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yes. Awesome. This has been awesome. So like I said, you guys, I'll put everything in the show notes. So if you want more information about Kelly, you can go to lifecoachschool.com forward slash 57, and you can get all of her links and information there. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we will talk to you next week. Bye, Kelly. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Life Coach School Podcast. It would be incredibly awesome if you would take a moment to write a quick review on iTunes. For any questions, comments, or coaching issues you would like to hear on the show, please visit us at www.thelifecoachschool.com. 